Halloween is awesome. Oh, I know, candy and stuff, but I mostly mean the feel of it. It's the turning point between summer and winter, a time when brittle leaves drift down like crackling rain, and the wind is always just a bit colder than you expect it to be. Soft gray clouds and whispers in the shadows, and the wind ripping through your hair and clothes. Look, the season is my jam, all right? Now, historically, the time around Halloween has almost always demarcated a special time of year in almost any part of the world with a seasonal transition. Samhain and its corresponding spring holiday Beltane were both considered times when Fae and other such spirits could more easily slip into our world and cause problems. Outside the Gaelic mythosphere, All Saints Day and All Souls Day also happen in that general time frame, holidays when saints and the dead are specially celebrated and mourned. Dia de los Muertos, a Mexican holiday which used to be celebrated at the beginning of summer, has been retroactively associated with All Saints Day and All Souls Day and bumped up to the general time frame of Halloween as well. Bottom line, a lot of people see Halloween as a time when spirits, ghosts, fairies, and other such otherworldly entities get the opportunity for some special attention. So it's no surprise that there are some folk tales with that exact premise. The most famous of them comes out of Scotland, which has given us a gloriously eerie folk tale taking place in the exact context of Halloween's magical liminal time. This is the story of Tam Lin. So our story begins with a dire warning. We are informed that maidens should never go through the woods of Carterhaw, or if they do go, they should make sure to leave a token of some kind, like a ring or a green cloak, because Carterhaw is haunted by the mysterious yet handsome and sensitive Tam Lin. And should an enterprising maiden pass through the woods without leaving him a souvenir, he'll take her virginity instead. This is when we're introduced to our spunky heroine, Bonnie Janet, who enters the story when she hikes up her skirts, does her hair up all fancy, and strolls on into Carterhaw like she owns the place. As it turns out, this is because Janet actually does own the place. Her dad owns the surrounding lands and has given the woods to her. She plucks a double-headed rose and Tamlin appears all magical like, what are you doing in my haunted glen at this time of night? Don't you know the stories? And Janet's all, oh gee, looks like I left my rings and cloak at home. Well, I'm sure I can think of something to offer you. Look, you're cute, and everyone at my dad's castle is, like, super old. So Janet and Tamlin do what young, attractive singles do, and then Janet heads home. It soon becomes clear that she's, rather predictably, gotten pregnant. Her father asks her which of his knights is responsible for this, and Janet's like, hey, nobody's responsible for this baby but me. And also my elf boyfriend who lives in the woods. So she runs back to Carterhaw and contemplates using an herbal plan B, but then Tamlin's like, whoa, before you do anything like that, let me tell you my tragic backstory. See, Tamlin isn't actually an elf or a fairy. He's human. But one day, when he was out riding, he fell off his horse straight into the arms of the Queen of the Fairies, who took him into the hill where the Fae lived. Now, it's nice consorting with the Queen of the Fae, but unfortunately for Tamlin, the Fae have something of a septennial responsibility. Every seven years on Halloween, they have to pay a tithe to hell. The Fae don't really like sacrificing one of their own, so they prefer to sacrifice humans when they have them. And Tamlin worries that this year, he's set to be sacrificed. And also Halloween is today. While Janet is having none of this, and with the help of Tamlin's insider information, they come up with a plan by which she can rescue him and conveniently avoid winding up as a single mother. So at midnight, Janet sneaks out, camouflaged from fairy eyes in a green cloak. She watches the fairy procession, spots Tamlin's horse, and leaps out to pull him out of the saddle. The queen of the fairies responds by transforming Tamlin into respectively a lizard, a snake, a bear, a lion, a chunk of red-hot iron, and finally an actual fire. Fortunately, Janet was prepared for this, and Tamlin had previously told her that, as her baby daddy, there's no way he could hurt her no matter what form he takes. So she refuses to let go, except to dump fire Tamlin in a well, at which point he attains his final transformation, Tamlin but naked. Janet bundles him up in her cloak, and the Queen of the Fairies angrily concedes defeat. Though she does tell Tamlin that if she'd known he'd end up like this in a relationship with a mortal woman, she would have started off their relationship by petrifying his eyeballs. That is a red flag if ever I saw one. I know you think you love her And you're making plans to leave But I must tell you something I just hope you'll believe I know it isn't real love that you see in her eyes Because she's never met a man she didn't like 